Hello, people. How you doing? Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world of the WWE, especially with Vince McMahon. Uh, right now, people are scraping the surface and they're telling you a few things that are going on. But I'm going to give you a few things that you're not hearing right now. And um, one, uh, I'm going to talk about Vince being banned from the WWE. Um, I mentioned this about a month ago, and I'm going to explain to you why. Uh, and, and first of all, uh, the gentleman that Carlucci, that guy that came for, for, uh, Tom Carlucci, he used to uh, work for the WWE. He came through. Uh, he came forward and he was talking about it. But first of all, you know, I'm from the mob genre. I like to say one thing about Tom Carlucci. Whether you like Vince McMahon or you don't like Vince McMahon, at least Tom Carlucci is not a rat, not an informant. Okay, so I disagree with him backing uh, Vince and everything, but, you know, that's because I realize how evil Vince is. Uh, now, I've been dealing with the WWE since 1992, uh, uh, legal area. They've done a lot of things to destroy my family. But at least Tom Carlucci is being honest and saying that uh, when he was let go from the company in 2020, uh, he said the dirt sheets, figures, the dirt sheets, they come forward and they want to ask him to talk about, uh, say bad things about the WWE. And he refused to. Because he worked there his whole life, a, a good portion of his life, and he liked it. His family worked there, his son, and I think his wife. And he just didn't want to uh, be a rat. But this guy has no problem with being a rat. This is the son-in-law of Vince McMahon. This is a guy that Emmanuel, the new owner of the company, has put all his faith in. And this is the guy that has basically uh, been behind part of the ban of his father in-law who took him off the streets basically and gave him a career uh and uh he's told not to uh, uh he's told everybody not to let vince in the building and this came from the order of emmanuel and tko they and i can understand that part they don't want him in the building he's a bad man but the fact of the matter is He's also a rat. And when when you have the informants come forward and when the feds come after you, you need an informant. And people, I am telling you, he is going to be the informant. He's going to be the biggest informant. When Janelle Grant was going through all that stuff at Titan Towers, his office was only a couple offices down the hallway. He knew everything that was going on with Janelle Grant. He's seen it. He heard all the talk about it. He knew. So he had a choice. Give up Vince or you're going down to Vince. So he got a he got a, a good chance to keep his job not uh, and give up Vince. And he's going to be Emmanuel's boy there now. He's going to be the guy that Emmanuel, he's going to be Emmanuel's robot. And Emmanuel's a very powerful man and he needs robots. So Triple H has went from kissing Vince's ass for 20 years, and now he has a new guy whose ass he's going to kiss, and that's going to be Emmanuel. But uh, I'm going to put something up. Uh, you guys know Joe Lowry does my live shows with me. He did this. Uh, this is a good little short. I'm going to put it up and, uh, and and go to his channel and, and sub to him because he's doing a really good job. But let me put up his short first. Organizations reporting that Vince McMahon is no longer allowed at WWE World Headquarters in Stamford, Connecticut. He is therefore banned. This comes on the heels of recent sealed documents filed by Assistant U.S. Attorney Sarah Mordazavi. With a notice of appearance, Ms. Mordazavi is no stranger to human sex trafficking. A Harvard and Georgetown law grad, her office boasts an impressive 95% conviction rate. She has prosecuted several high-profile cases, with the most recent being her conviction of socialite heiress and former assistant to Jeffrey Epstein, Ms. Ghislaine Maxwell. In turn, Janelle Grant has agreed to pause her lawsuit for six months pending the DOJ's investigation. With a pending indictment on the horizon, could this be the end result of the man who created the sports entertainment empire? We'll all soon find out. I'm Joe Lowry. What a day! Okay, that's Joe Lowry. What a day. Very good short. I wanted you to put that up. And I'm going to also read this. Let me add this to the stage. Now, um, when I first read this, uh, I didn't know what to think of... Uh, Tom Carlucci, but you guys know I'm from the mob genre. We have a when the feds come after you, uh, you have a lot of informants and a rat under bosses. John Gotti was put in jail because Sammy Gravano ratted on him. 
Uh, but Tom Colucci will not rat on Vince. Now, I don't know, Tom, if the FBI game came, came to you and told you that you had to uh, go to the grand jury, what you're going to do. Uh, because you're putting yourself out there now. You're saying that you know all this stuff about Vince, but you're not going to talk about him. That's a very dangerous pre precedent when you're talking with the feds because the feds hear you saying this. Don't be surprised if you get served, if you if you ever already been got in the served the subpoena to be before uh, to come before the grand jury, like many people already have. But that's just my opinion. So let me read this now. Okay, this is called, uh, and this is re by Wrestling News, just so you know, people. I don't like to use people's stuff without giving them a shout out. This is Wrestling News. Vince McMahon not allowed to visit the new WWE headquarters, including the gym he designed with his trainer. WWE has gone through a lot of changes over the years, the biggest being Vince McMahon being gone after allegations made against him by Janelle Grant. McMahon's name isn't mentioned on TV or on any of WWE's digital properties. Additionally, according to someone who worked at the company for decades, McMahon is not allowed at the new WWE headquarters. I did a show a month ago and told you this, but see, I'm not, I'm a little guy in here. You know, I'm not part of, I'm not an insider, uh, but I hear a lot of things that people do not hear. I hear the legitimate stuff, you know, especially when it comes to parts of the lawsuit, what's going on. And the people that I hear it from aren't on here. You know, they're dealing with that kind of stuff. On a recent uh, episode of the Insiders podcast, Conrad Thompson spoke with uh, Tom Carlucci, who worked for Vince McMahon since 1987. Carlucci wore many hats at the WWF over the years, and he was one of McMahon's most loyal employees. He was let go during the pandemic, but his wife continues to work for the company, and his son does freelance work for NXT. Colucci said that he was released. He got messages from the dirt sheet asking him uh, for dirt on McMahon, but he was adamant and he, th that he was loyal and would never say a bad word about him. Colucci also ripped on people who feels turned her back on McMahon. Okay, uh, this, this is uh, Tom Colucci. This is one time I'm going to uh, walk away from you on this. Um, Vince McMahon's a bad man, Tom. Okay, you might see it, you, you know, and you know he's a bad man because you work there. You've seen the things that he's done. You've seen the women that have been abused. If you were there in 1988, that means that you were through, there through my brother's lawsuit in 1992. You may have even seen my brother or met my brother when he temporarily came back to work. Um, that I don't know, but that's that's just what I'm saying. But I do respect the fact that, fact that you're not like Triple H, a rat. Uh, he also stated that the new WWE headquarters building, McMahon visioned because he wanted all of his employees under one building. He specifically stated that the gym was made for McMahon and he'll never be able to step inside of it. Okay. What do you mean the gym was made for McMahon? McMahon's own personal gym? That's mid-70-year-old man? Actually, a good owner makes the gym for his employees, for the people that make him his money. Okay, and uh, Vince McMahon, uh, I can understand the gym being built and everything, but let's face it, he's 78 years old now. Uh, now you're talking about the new building that just opened. So you got uh, Vince McMahon's worried about that gym at the age of 78. There's only so much your body could do at 78. And we can see the man can barely walk around. He has a cane right now. Um, but if, if he built it for himself, that's just typical Vince McMahon using the excuse of his employees. But I would think that he built it for his employees. That would actually be the real reason that he built it. Colucci said, I will never badmouth Vince. Now what's going on with Vince? It's a totally different story. There's three sides to every story in my book. So stuff is going to come out and you'll see it. I don't know anything about it, but it is what it is, as we all know. Well, Tom Colucci, I know a lot about it. And I do know this. I do know that that Triple H knew everything that was going on between Janelle Grant and Vince McMahon. I know that he was on the same floor. I know that he was only a couple offices away. And there's no way he could have missed it. Everybody in the building knew what was going on. So when you think about that, you know, that's just fact. And there's evidence of this. There's proof of this. And you guys are going to see a lot of stuff coming out that's going to shock you. 
You know, I'm finding stuff out every day, people, that shocks me. Stuff that, unfortunately, I cannot mention on here. Um, but I would love to mention it. And, and it's so hard that I can't mention it. Uh, I found out a couple things last night that I would love to talk about on here. It's a shocker. It's other people that are involved in this that are going to be going down on federal charges. See, it's not just Vince going down on federal charges. It's just, it's not going to be just Laurenitis. It's going to be other people that were involved in this also because they put their self out there. They were involved in these acts committed against Janelle Grant. And I challenge anybody, if you have not read Janelle Grant's lawsuit, I read it twice now. Go back and read her lawsuit. So you can understand exactly why people are making saying, why is trafficking part of the lawsuit? And here's why trafficking is part of that lawsuit. Because if you offer some, an employee or someone that you want to come to your company, sex with somebody for the purpose of luring that person to sign a contract with your company. And at that time, uh, we know who it was but I'm not going to say his name because he might be innocent, but he's the big superstar wrestler. Let's put it that way. Okay. So he was, he was, and, and, and there's evidence of this. He was offered Janelle Grant to sign with the company and he considered it and it's evidence in text. So that right there is trafficking. That is uh, a very serious charge. And that's why you don't see this trafficking going away. And then also, Vince was flying people in to be with Janelle. Now, that's, an, that's not exactly trafficking, but that is a crime. He's bringing people across state lines. He's being a pimp. Vince thought he was being a pimp. So he's bringing people across state lines and telling Janelle, you got to go with this guy. And she's saying, I don't want to go with this guy, Vince. And, uh, this has nothing to do with whether she loved Vince. It's kind of obvious that she did it one time and then it went nuts. And then there were other workers that were bought in, uh, other people that did other things in Vince McMahon's life that Vince McMahon wanted to advance himself in their eyes. So he offered up Janelle. That's sex trafficking also. There's sex trafficking all over this thing, people. So for you people that say, oh, I don't know, where's the sex trafficking? Read the lawsuit. Read it more than once. Read through the line slowly. Write down little notes. Learn the lawsuit, and you'll see how powerful that lawsuit is. It's a very powerful lawsuit, and that's why it's been uh, frozen. So now it's not going to, uh, nothing's going to happen. But when the indictment comes down on Vince, here's what happens. When the indictment comes down on Vince and they indict, say they indict Vince, say he's charged and they bought, they bring charges of uh, evidence. So you have Janelle Grant's camp, Holland Law Firm and Ann Callis. They can use the evidence that is presented. So they're in better shape than ever. And not only are they going to go after Vince McMahon, they're going to go after the WWE also. And quite possibly TKO. And that's the problem that Vince has right now. But Vince also has a problem with this man right here. And I'm going to tell you why. He has, he's going to be the informant. He's going to, you watch and mark my word. He's going to be one of the main informants on this. He screwed over uh, Triple H's wife. Uh, and then, you know, you got to remember the wife knows a lot of stuff about whatever th what happened with Ashley Massaro, the cover up in that. Hey, listen, people, there's no statutes of limitation on rape. None. So that's going to be a problem there. And who has evidence on that? Stephanie McMahon was part of that cover up. That's the wife of Triple H. You don't think Triple H is making a deal right now to keep his wife out of this, to keep him out of this? So he has Triple H has two choices. To be like uh, Laronitis and charged or work with the feds. 
And it's obvious that he already started working with the feds. And he probably started working for the feds. In my opinion, when, when, he, when Vince merged, everybody knew what in that merger about these outstanding charges. Nobody's going to do a billion dollar merger, an $8 billion merger, I think it was. No one's going to do a, a merger like that without sending their investigators out. So those investigators all knew about uh, the payoffs and everything with Vince. And yet they still were willing to take the chance and buy in with Vince. And a week after that, Vince was gone. And who, who everybody was gone. The McMahon family was all gone. Only one guy was left standing. Triple H. Come on, people. How obvious does it have to be? Why is Triple H still there? You know, he's there because he's on the good side of the government right now. Because he's helping, he's helping uh, bury Vince. Vince knows that his family, his own family, is going to bury him. And that's what you get when you do what he's done to his family. Let me finish reading this and I'll move on from that. Okay, on Vince McMahon being forced out of his own company, Carlucci says he can't even walk in the building. First of all, uh, he wasn't forced out of his own company. He did it to himself. Not forced. He did it to himself. When he locked that woman in her office, in, in the offices, when he started uh, offering that woman uh, to other men, when he started passing her pictures all over the place, that's his downfall. But here's what his real downfall is. He was forced out of his own company because he did not want to pay her and keep his word to her at all. And it all backfired on him. So let's not blame nobody but Vince McMahon for doing this and Triple H for burying him. Okay, let's lose. Uh, he always wanted us from day one because uh, we were in two different buildings. We had a corporate office exit nine, and then we were right down the street in the corporate from the corporate office. Our big production studio, he always wanted us under one roof. That was his dream to have us under one roof. The dream came... And he's not even part of it anymore. Good. Good. He doesn't deserve to be part of it. Okay. You know who's part of it? Do you know who's reaping the rewards of Vince McMahon? This man right here. We got to give it to Triple H. Triple H knew exactly who to marry. And he knew exactly what to do to protect himself. And he knew exactly what to do to take control of the business. That is one smart, whether you like Triple H or not, he's a smart, he's a fox. Colucci said the gym created by Vince, he designed a gym for uh, with his trainer, Mike, who I know really well. Yes, steroids. Come on. They're all juiced up. There's other juiced up people too that are going to be coming out in a lawsuit. When uh, I'm sorry, in the indictment and in the charges, you're going to hear about all this stuff, people. This is nothing. Wait until you hear the full story. It's an incredible story. It's going to be one of the best stories you've ever heard about, about a human being, Vince McMahon, who is like the ultimate evil dude. Every meeting that goes on over there, you'll never see Vince here again from, uh, from the TKO people. It is crazy. You think about if that's the, his legacy. That is his legacy. He has no legacy. His legacy is gone. Vince McMahon destroyed his own legacy. And when you get upset, remember what he did to this woman right here. This woman worked, Ashley Massaro worked for him. And then there's Janelle Grant and he abused them. Ashley Massaro would be in her room shaking and calling up her boyfriend and saying to her boyfriend, I'm scared. He won't stop coming to my door. If that's the man you want to stick up for, Mr. Colucci, you go right ahead. I respect that. You're not going to rat on him. You know, got to respect that. Even though I think you're wrong, uh, you got to respect that you won't rat on him. McMahon has denied all wrongdoing, has, been, has not been charged with anything as of this writing. Janelle Grant recently agreed to pause her lawsuit request uh, 
at the request of the Justice Department, which is cur currently investigating McMahon. Yes, and you know what, people? It goes beyond that. This is no longer an investigation. This is something that's going to happen. Vince McMahon is going to be uh, is going to be sued. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. He's going to be convicted. You watch and see. You remember I said that. It's going to be very hard for him not to be convicted because there's so much evidence against him. And he put the evidence out there. Can you imagine that this guy, he got away with this. Like right around 21, 22. Then he said, let me pay the women off. And then his daughter takes over the board. And when the daughter takes over the board, they investigate it. They investigated that the father was guilty. And what did he do? He asked somebody else on the board to investigate it. And that person came forward and said, oh, Miss, Vince McMahon's innocent. So Vince came back and the daughter's gone. Stephanie's gone. She goes home crying to her husband. My daddy screwed me over. Pushed me out of the company. And they got their revenge, people. And I'm sure Linda McMahon, but Linda McMahon, who did a lot of bad things with Vince and behind a lot of cover-ups with Vince and Jerry McDivitt, the three of them, doesn't mean that they're going to be, they're, they're, they're going to escape. They're, they're going to escape free. It doesn't mean that, people. Do not be surprised if another man that turns on Vince is going to be Jerry McDivitt. Maybe not, maybe not his wife. But Jerry McDivitt was part of a lot of illegal cover-ups. Jerry McDivitt knew a lot of his crimes. So, do you know, we can get very, very deep here. This is not going away. You know, when I came into this genre three months ago, everybody said, oh, it's getting slow. It's slowing down. We don't hear anything. But they don't understand a federal indictment takes about uh, a year and a half to two years to really investigate. And that's what's happening here. But they have a six-month pause with the lawsuit. That means they're getting ready to indict them. That mean, that doesn't. It's not like they have a two-year pause. It's a six-month pause. That means very soon you're going to see Vince McMahon get indicted, Laronitis get indicted, and you're going to find out who the witnesses are. And you're going to be surprised. There's going to be some other people indicted on this. The WWE has a big problem, too. They're going to be indicted because Vince McMahon ran it. So there's going to be a lot of things going on, people. And I'm just giving you the legal jargon here. I'm not giving you like, I like Vince, I hate Vince. This is the reality of what's going on. It's your choice whether you want to believe me or not. But I remember about six weeks ago, I said that the case was going to be paused. Remember I said that? Nobody else said that. I said six weeks ago on a video that they're going to pause this case. And I heard that from really good inside information, very good inside information. So let's just leave it at that, people. I just like to say, what do you think? Tell me what you think is going to happen. And please sub to this channel. Please hit the like. We try to put out good product here. And uh, uh, Saturday night, we're going to be doing a live. Um, uh, and then I'm going to be going away probably soon for about a week or 10 days on vacation. I will be coming in and out of my lives, but Joe Lowry and Renee will be doing my lives for me. So they'll be there and I'll be from, I'll be talking to you from the road. We have a lot of things going on. I want to be there when this all goes down people and I'll be right there with that people bless you all. Thank you so much. And uh, if you feel sorry for Vince, that's your right to feel sorry for Vince. But if you're going to feel sorry for Vince, make sure you feel sorry for all his victims also. Take care, people.